Hello and welcome to another video of the series where we create ourselves an endless runner in Unity. In the last episode we finished adding some particle effects which you can see in the footage right here. And today we will be focusing on something completely different but also a very important component of our game. We will create ourselves the foundation of a main menu or a starting screen. Like in the last videos I will walk you through this step by step and explain to you guys how I implement my menu in Unity and how the UI system works in general. If you want to see more in-depth devlogs with practical tutorial parts, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the like button if you like this video. And please also make sure to share your feedback, ideas and your opinion in the comments. I appreciate it very much that you guys are really helping me out making this game better and getting new ideas. Alright, with not much further to do guys, let's jump straight into Unity and let's get going. First we need to create ourselves a new scene for our menu screen. Since I will be using some elements of our first level it's easier for me to just copy it and then get rid of the elements we don't use. So let's quickly do that. So I just copy my scene and I rename it to main menu. Alright now let's open up our new scene and let's first get rid of all the stuff we don't need. First I delete my UI elements inside my UI object but I keep the UI object itself. This will be our canvas for the menu and we don't need the spawn manager and the game manager. Inside the player object I also set the movement speed to 0 and um, so that our dogs stand still and I also set the jump speed to 0. Now our game is pretty much static and our player can't be controlled anymore. I will later place some static houses for the background so let's also get rid of the empty grass plots. Okay, now that we got rid of all the unnecessary stuff we can now set up the UI for our menu. For this I just right click on my UI object and add a panel as a child. This will be the frame for our menu navigation. First let's get rid of the source image, I just select none. And then I want to set the color, I want it to be black but let's keep a little bit of transparency so that we can see through it a little bit. Now I just quickly check if my anchors are set correct, I want them to be stretched horizontally and vertically. I don't want the panel to be full width but half the screen size, so I set the anchor at max x to 0.5, this represents 50% and of course now we need to change the right position back to zero again. I just quickly check different aspect ratios to make sure everything is fine until now. I don't worry about other aspect ratios than 16x9 or 16x10 that much because our game will be forced to run in landscape mode anyways. Hmm, maybe I'll remove the transparency for now. I have a brief idea in mind on how I want it to look but I will design this as I create it and maybe refine it later on. Okay, now for our buttons we need a package called Text Mesh Pro. This will give us a few more options and will also make our text look much smoother and sharper overall. First we need to make sure that the package is installed. So I go to Window and then Package Manager and I just search for Text Mesh Pro. As you can see in my case it's already installed but it needs an update so let's quickly do that. Alright, now let's add a button as a child of our panel. I just right click and then choose the Text Mesh Pro button under the UI category. Since I was not using Text Mesh Pro before in my project, Unity asks me now to install some essential assets which we need. Um, so I hit the import button but I will skip the examples and extras. Okay, now let's rename our button to play button and let's also set the text to play. As with the panel I also want to remove the source image. Now let's set our font to the same I used for the other UI stuff. But as you see our font isn't selectable in the pop-up right now, that's because we need to create a font asset first. So I just go to my folder where I keep my fonts in the project panel and then I just right click on the one I wanted to use and then select create, then text mesh pro and then font asset. Now when we go back to our text element and open up the font selection again, we can see that we can select our modec font. Let's also make it a little bit bigger, let's see, um, yeah I think I go with 75 for now. And let's also get rid of the button backgrounds. Um, for that I just go to the button object and then set the alpha to zero for every color so that the background won't get shown anymore. I'm not quite sure about the font colors yet. Maybe we can use some sort of a nice yellow. Um, yeah, that looks not too bad. Now, our first button is almost finished so I just go ahead and duplicate it. And I call it char button. This will be the button for our character select screen. I also change the text to character. As you see it's a little bit too wide right now, so let's uh, adjust it really quick. Okay, now I want to show you something really handy. Since we will have quite a few buttons and we don't want to set the position for each and every one of them manually to kind of spread them, we will add a vertical layout group component to the panel. So let's go to our panel object and hit add component and then let's just search for vertical layout group. First I want to set my child alignment. Middle center completely centers our content, but I want them to be just vertically centered and horizontally on the right side, so I go with the middle right option. 
Let's now duplicate our button again and I call it level button. This will be our level select screen. And I also need a button for our in-game store. And of course we also need a button for our settings menu. Alright, so far so good. Now of course we need to align our text elements as well. I wonder if I could just multi-select them. Ah, it works. That's a nice feature. Now the alignment is set up properly, but as you see we need a little bit of space on the right side. So let's go back to our vertical layout group on our panel object and let's set the padding for the right. I think I just go with 30 for now. And I also want to set the top and the bottom padding so that the menu elements are nearer together. Not sure what value we need here, but let me quickly test it out. Okay, so I think I go with 150 for both, a top and the bottom for now. Hmm, it doesn't look very good yet. Um, maybe I set the alpha value for the background color of the panel object back so that we have a little bit of transparency. Yes, that looks much better in my opinion. We will refine that even more in the future, but let's first get the basic functionality down. Now, as you see, we have a little bit of a problem with our scaling right now, which is not working as intended yet. To fix this, we just need to go to our UI object and uh, there's a component called Canvas Scaler. Here we just need to set the UI scale mode from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. This should fix our behavior, but of course we quickly need to adjust our font size and the padding of our layout groups as well. So let me do this really quick. Okay, that looks fine. As you see, it scales correct now. As I think about it, I don't like that yellow anymore. Uh, maybe it looks better when we change all colors to white except for the play button. Well, I don't like it that much. Um, I will also change the play button to white. I will refine the design later on. For now it's okay, let's focus on the functionality first. Okay, now let's work on the background of our scene next. I want to have a background which represents the level we have currently selected. I will now just drag in and position some of our house prefabs real quick. To not bore you, I will put you on fast forward for this. See you in a minute guys. Alright, that looks pretty good. Now I just create an empty game object and put all the stuff I just created in there so that we don't have too much chaos going on in our hierarchy. Of course we need to reset the transform of our empty game object so that the positions don't all get messed up. Now I just drag them into our folder and we are good to go. I also want to reposition our dog to make him look into the camera. So I go to the dog model under the model root of our player object to turn him a bit. Um, Yes, that's good I think. And I also want to reposition my camera so that our dog is more in the center. So let's play around with the camera transform a little bit. Let's test that out in the game mode real quick. Yeah, that looks alright. But let's tweak this some more. Let's see if we can make it a little bit cooler. Yeah, I think that looks pretty decent. I think we can work with that for now. Maybe the menu panel needs to be just a slight bit darker in my opinion. Let's go with 99. Okay, I think we are now done with the visuals for the stage and let's now add a little bit of functionality to our menu. For this episode I will just create a start game functionality. Like I said before, what we create right now is just the foundation of our main menu. In the future I will add more and more stuff like the level or the character select screen as we iterate through our project. Now if we click on a button in the hierarchy, you see there's a click method in the inspector when we uh, scroll down a little bit. Here's where we can assign stuff to our click event. To do that we first need a script. So let's go to our scripts folder in the project panel and let's create a new script. I call it menu controller. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now let's add ourselves a new method. I just call it start game. And in our method we just use our scene manager and load scene and then level 1. Now let's go back to Unity and let's select our main menu panel. Let's hit the add component button and just search for the menu controller script we just created. Now I'll go back to the play button to the onclick method area and hit the plus button. And I drag and drop my main menu panel into the slot where it says none. In the drop down I now select the menu controller and then our start game method. This will execute the method we just created whenever the player clicks on the button and our method will basically just load our level 1 scene. Okay, now let's quickly test it out. As you see, it works properly. When we hit our play button, the game starts. Now, I also want an option to return back to the main menu from the game. Right now, everything what's going to happen is that the level restarts when the player dies. 
So I thought about a short game over menu where the player can decide if he wants to try again or go back to the main menu. So let's quickly implement that as well. Let's open up our level 1 scene. To not bore you, I will make this quick and set you on fast forward for the visual part. We basically use the same components in a similar way like we did in our main menu, which basically is a panel and a few buttons ordered in a layout group. So let me quickly set this up before we start implementing the functionality. See you in a minute guys. And there we go, this is what I got. Um, simple, but it will do for now. Now, let's add some functionality. First, I deactivate the menu I just created. I will activate it by script when the player dies. For that, let's just go to our game manager and open up our game manager script in Visual Studio. First, we need a reference to our game over menu, of course. And I also want to create a new method called game over. And I just used the set active method of our game over menu to activate it. Alright, now we just need to call our game over method whenever our player dies. Back in Unity, we now of course need to drag our menu into the slot of our game manager script in the inspector. Now let's go to our player object and let's open up our player collision control script in Visual Studio, where we handle our enemy collision. Um, we already have a reference to our game manager, so we just need to go to the code passage where we restart our level and instead call the game over method of our game manager instead. Now every time we die, we should see a game over screen appear. So let's go back to Unity and let's test it out real quick. As you see it works. Now we just need to add some interaction to the click event of our buttons, similar like we did in our main menu. For that we go to my scripts folder and I just drag the menu controller onto the game over menu game object in the hierarchy. Of course in our script is just a method to start playing, so let's open that up in Visual Studio. And let's add another method, I call it main menu. And in it I load our main menu scene. Now let's go back to Unity. Next I select our retry button. Like before I just go to the on click section and hit the plus button. Now I just need to drag and drop our game over menu into the slot in the inspector. And now as you see I can select the start game method from our menu controller. And I will now do that for the menu button as well. But instead of the start game method I will use the main menu method. And that should basically be it. Let's now test out if everything works properly. Well of course we need to deactivate our main menu again. Alright, now let's kill ourselves and test it out real quick. The menu button doesn't seem to work. Yeah, retry works fine. Nope, menu definitely doesn't work. Let's have a look what's the problem here. Ah, you see, we have an error in our console, so let's take a look. Um, it says that our main menu scene is not in our build settings yet, uh, which of course is correct. So let's fix this real quick. I just go to file and then to build settings. And now we need to add our main menu scene into the scenes and build list. Um, so I go to the scenes folder in the project panel and I just drag and drop the scene in. I also pull it uh, to the top since our main menu will be the first entry point in our game. Alright, that should have fixed it. Now let's try it out again. And as you see it works properly now. We now basically have a navigation between the main menu and our level 1 scene in both directions. And this is basically it for today's implementation. We managed to create ourselves the foundation of a main menu with the functionality to start a game and also to exit to the main menu after the player dies. Guys, thank you for watching, I really appreciate it, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please drop a like and also consider subscribing if you want to see more devlogs like this and if you want to see our endless run returns out. Please also make sure to share your feedback, ideas and thoughts on the game in the comments. And I also want to give a big shout out to all you guys who are supporting me. Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. With not much further to do guys, thanks for watching, I'm out, take care and stay healthy, bye bye.